Isaiah 25, verse 6 to 12, speaks of a, of a sovereign move of God over the land of Israel and the house on the mountain of the Lord. I believe it also applies to the people of God in sovereign times. It speaks of a of God coming in a fashion where he begins to release the wine and the fat and the celebration and then begins to dismantle the shields and veils that have been locking up the people of God from seeing and hearing. Then he goes and begins to swallow up the death that has incurred in victory and then goes to, to wipe the tears away from the, the trauma of the battle and then removes the reproach off of the people. And then the people begin to say, this is the God that I've been waiting for. This is the salvation we have waited. And then he speaks behind the scene, what is he actually doing is that he's trampling underfoot the pride of man, the capacity that man thinks he can do what God only can do. All the schemery, trickery, all of the things we, man, we, we, we kind of, Back, put ourselves, our confidence in, and he just starts to remove it and bring people back into in joyful union and peace. And I think we're in that season. In fact, I know we're in that season. That's why life's so awful for some of us, because the conflict of the pride that's within us is being taken down while God's trying to liberate us into joy. And if it, so you're going, oh, well, that's not working anymore. And God's saying, well, I need you to try this. And yes, it's it can't be tools because if it's just a tool, then it's going to lose its value. It's like Cammie's famous quote, you know, I've been there, done that, read the book, got the t-shirt, no thanks. You know, there's something that's seeking to dismantle the unbelief that gets caught in our soul and our spirit through long durations of pursuit. And I believe that God's doing that. So go ahead and give the word. And... Can I turn it on? If, I keep, if it's not on, then... How do you know God wants you to talk? <laughs> I can tease. <laughs> My children, you have truly crossed over you have clearly crossed over into a new world. But you've crossed over into a new world where there are still blockages that the enemy would try to put in your way that you would move ahead. And I say to you, as the Israelite people crossed over the Red Sea and I destroyed the enemies behind them, and I went out in front of them to destroy the enemies before them, I say to you, I call forth your faith. I call forth your faith. I call forth your faith in me. In all, all that is needed, I call forth your faith. Because what the enemy has tried to hold you back from pushing forward, whether it be you as individuals or this church as a body, I say to you now, as I descended into hell and I myself dealt with the enemy, and I myself freed those who were in captivity. What the enemy has done in your lives to try to stop you from moving forward, I say this day, I remove, I remove you, I remove your soul and what you have went through and things that have blocked you from the very bow, very bowels of hell. I remove all that is blocking you yes. from moving whoa, forward. I take you out and I set you straight and I set you in a place of favor and I say you will move forth now. You will move forth now into what you have always been destined to do. It has come to an end. I am the beginning and the end and I have made an end of all that has been placed in your life that come you on. will not move forward for you will move. As my people moved, you will move. As you obey me, you will move. As you keep your eyes on me, you will move. You will move forward and you will not be stopped for yeah. I am moving yes. in all areas yes. of your life. As your pastor has yes. said, I am moving in your finances. I am moving in your ministries. I am moving in the needs that you cannot meet yourself. For it is a new day, 
a new day for me to show forth what I can do. Remember the wonders, the wonders of God that moved and helped my people come out of their captivity, defeat their enemies, defeat all that was before them, Remember how they walked in the desert and their clothes and their shoes and everything else never wore out. Know that I, the Lord, say this is a new day. A new day Come for on. your finances. A I new day it. for I how you walk. It. A new day for how you I see things it. come about in your life. For I am the great I am. I am the great I am. And as I did for my yes. people, I say to you now, watch. It is a new day and a new land as it was a new day and a new land for them, saith the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's receive it then. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. Thank him for it. It is a new day, a new season. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa. Okay, so we're going to start in Song of Songs, Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7. Uh, I would love to take you through all, the, all of the book. And it is a, it's a book of maturing love. And part of the reason in our conversation, the Lord gave us two strategies. I get to claim that I heard the word for praise first. Cammie heard the word for the season of giving first. Both came before the, the Feast of Tabernacles. The praise we've, we've seen just growing ever in, in the midst of the conference and now is a sound of advancing and power. But the other word was to go and be, to go and give, give and go and help and go and be a blessing. So as we were thinking of Christmas season, I asked Cam, I said, I need your help because we're trying to sort out what we're going to do with some of our normal Christmas gatherings and do we go bigger, do we go this, do we that. And so we were talking and Cam said, I feel like we're actually supposed to not be doing anything for ourselves. We're supposed to just go and give Christmas away, go give, be blessings to people. And not that it's an organized blessing, just to, that every person would begin to say, Lord, actually, every person already knows what to do, who to reach and who to touch, showing kindness. The smallest acts, like being kind to the crossing guard when you bring your child or grandchild to school, uh, reaching out to a neighbor, to someone who's in your situation, but yet as, not as far, and needs the encouragement, just to the least of them. So we started praying over that, and as we came into the conference, it sounded like, of course, because power is to be a witness and to bring Jesus to where people don't know him. And so we're going to, in this next couple of months, just give you all permission to go out and be Jesus, to bring Christmas to anybody and everybody. And we won't do our Christmas party, and we will do, we'll do Christmas Eve service and then Thanksgiving Eve service. And otherwise, we'll just release ourselves from the, the, the let's take care of us and make us feel wonderful and have fun and just look to see who might be there, needy, who might just, um, and not burden, not a, not a not, you know, it'll just happen. You watch. You, you, and you, creative ideas, witty inventions, thoughts. Grab your neighbors, let's sing together, let's eat together, let's, you know, go to here. You just, so, so what we're doing, is, what we started looking like, praise, advancing, giving, helping, serving, loving, touching humanity that's very frightened right now. Humanity is very unaware of where to go and all of a sudden we're carrying so much life. Giving what we have to co-worker, neighbor, relative, could be as extravagant as spending three thousand dollars to fly to one of your somebody in your family that's in another country that needs to have a visit and to be encouraged, or as simple as crossing the street with a apple pie. It can be. I was sitting in a retail store with my daughter. We were switching accounts, so it was going into her name. We we're waiting. As we waited, the manager came over and started helping us, and then began to inform us. Just started opening her heart that that two days prior there store had been robbed by gunpoint. Three armed men, guns waving in the face, and the trauma that had bro broken free, broken loose in amongst the employees. She would have been there, but she, for some reason, that day had been scheduled to open, not close. And as she talked and she shared, I am just started bringing to her, you know, well, we're going to pray for you, and God's going to give you peace. And, and then she's talking, yeah, I got a prayer off on my phone. And, and it's just, the world's going to open up to you. 
the people are going to open up to you and we're going and and prayers are going to be given and it's not something to force anyone it's just to allow life to flow from us and in letting life flow it'll be creative and you know doing the works of Jesus is a part of that uh, who knows what you know so be be open to some superb ideas because the power of the Holy Spirit wants to witness Jesus and he wants to do it outside more than he even needs to do it here inside. So, but in all of that, here's something that's really true. Like Cammy was sharing, if we were to practice the tools that gave us capacity to, to build into our life the life of praise and just went back to the tools, they would become hollow and they would sound very phony. Even as in our relationship, but we... We, we employ the tools without trying to do them anymore. And we, we recognize, and we can skip a bunch of them because we know each other and we can get right to the issue of each other's heart. And that's what a maturing relationship has. But a lot of times what happens in the journey is we hit that trauma mark. The things that have occurred to us, they stun us. They stupefy us. They desolate us. That's what the word desolation means, is to stun or stupefy. And the other Hebrew word is to, uh, to put it into a wasteland. So one is the physical experience of a wasteland through a desolation, through a trauma, and the other is the emotional soul experience, which is where the tears have to be wiped. Because whenever you hear in Hebrew or Greek about wiping tears, it's taking the anointing of God to the source or origin of the cause of the tear and removing it in all of its dimensions. And I did a big teaching on about where the, the... If you follow your troubles all the way, honestly, you'll end up at you. And that's a hard... Pattern, that's a hard place to experience, but once you do, you're liberated from having to be righteous anymore. And now Jesus is the only one righteous. And you don't have any people, you don't have, you know, it gets your problem list really short. You have one problem, it's you. One reason you're not in, your, in the future, it's you. And once you can accept that, then A, you're immediately in your future because you can immediately come back into Jesus and be forgiven. And all your circumstances haven't changed, no longer do you go up the tree of knowledge of good and evil to blame others for where you are. Nor do you have to fix others so that you can go where you're supposed to go. You just release everything. And now it's just, Lord God, what are you doing to release me from my propensity to try to preserve my own life, save my own life, live righteously, live independent from you? Now we only get that way because we're all fearful and, and, and have insecurity and issues. I do. I'm the only one in the room fearful and have insecurity <laughs> issues. So I get this message. Thank you, Jesus. And, but at the same time, God draws us by love to pursue him. So we're in a big conflict right away. It's like getting married. Do you notice that? The person you love the most hurts you the most. They walk over your heart. And they don't even know they're doing it. And sometimes they do know they're doing it and do it on purpose. And you're having to try to sort out how do I stay vulnerable and open and but this is what's happening. I want to guard and protect and I want to control. And so this conflict is going and I don't think there's anybody harder to have a relationship with than Jesus. I mean he's God and he's always right. And he's good and he's always for his glory. So he's like total one-sided pulling us back into submission and, and delight while we're terrified at every every step of the way he takes. Song of Solomon is a story about that because you find a Shulamite who's, who's pursued by the Lord and in pursuit of the Lord and in marriage with the Lord. Married, loved, and maturing. And then there's this one moment in time which I'd just like to pick up right here. This is uh, Solomon, or if we would like it to be, it can be Jesus talking, beckoning this Shulamite, his wife, his bride, to pursue him. You are, f you are all fair, my love, and there's no spot in you. Come with me from Lebanon, my spouse, with me from Lebanon, and look from the top of Amana, from the top of Senir and Hermon, and from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. That sounds like a, what a trip, man. Oh, lots of places. It's in the spirit. You're, uh, 
experiences. Come, I'm opening the door. You've ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. You've ravished my heart with one look out of your eyes. You ever felt the Lord tell you how you're in, impacting him and, you're, and there's this, just this intimacy and one link of your necklace. Oh, how fair is your love, my sister, my spouse. How much better than wine is your love and the scent of your perfumes. Oh, then all the spices. Verse 11, please. Yeah, you're going to have to follow me because I take a lot of liberty in this. Your lips, O oh my spouse, drip of the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under your tongue and the fragrance of your garments is like the fragrance of Lebanon. You know, Jesus will just, he can wine and dine you. He can pull you into a, a, a yielded, yieldedness because of his goodness and because of his sincerity and because of his pursuit. A garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Your plants are an orchid of pomegranates with pleasant fruits, fragrant henna with spikenard. Now, we're not an agrarian society. We don't probably have all of these. This is not what we're, how we describe beauty. It's not where we live in the middle of, but it is descriptive language. And when love is expressed, whether it's ours to God or God to us, he will get descriptive. He will touch, because he's trying to unlock the cords of emotions to touch the issues that would cause us to surrender or give to him freely that which he is longing to have but cannot take from us or will not take from us. So he, he unlocks us. That's what the Holy Spirit's so good at. And he comes and, and, and where if you start to give yourself to prayer and fellowship in his word and in his spirit and next thing you know you have these moments where it just seems like wow he's just he's just taking me and life is going to be wonderful i surrender i surrender i surrender of course i surrender so he's just describing spikenard and saffron and calamus and cinnamon with all the trees of frankincense myrrh and aloes with all the chief spices a fountain of gardens, a well of living water, the streams from Lebanon, the Shulamite. Oh. So what do you do when Jesus comes like that to you? You give, you yield. Now it may not have not been those words, but you have, we've all probably in this room and online have had a moment like that where we, he came and wooed us. He, he courted us. He called us. He acknowledged the, the gold in us. He pulled us forward. And we said, yeah. And then here's the Shulamite's response. Oh, we pray these prayers. Awake, O north wind. And come, O south. Blow upon my garden that the spices may flow out. Let my beloved come to his garden, eat its pleasant fruits. Remember, this was a garden enclosed all nice and tidy, perfect. And he asked just for the north winds and the south wind. Once, once he's, let's just break this thing open so that the aroma and the fragrance and the beauty that I have been nurturing my life into can now fully be given and bless my beloved. Sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Until this happens. He says, I've come to my garden. My sister, my spouse. I've gathered my myrrh with my spice. I've eaten my honeycomb and with my honey. I've drunk my wine with my milk. And then, to your chagrin, Jesus turns to his friends. And he's got a strange group of friends. And says, hey guys, eat, oh friends. Drink, yes, drink deeply, oh beloved ones. And next thing you know, you're in something that is out of control. We call them moves of God. They're moments of time. They can last for moments, weeks, months, years. And we yield and we give permission. And Jesus seems to keep bringing more people home with him. And more, 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 more relationships go cross. And next thing you know, after this experience, you are... Well, you are just wherever you end up being. Usually offended, hurt, wounded, betrayed, dreams. You sold the farm, lost everything. You, 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 the abandonment did not re reward you with 
advancement, it usually leaves you with kind of like, whoa. I used to think this way. Uh, back to Pentecost. You're there. You're 120. And this back it was 20 years ago. I thought Brian Rogers, who's visiting his mom on the East Coast, who's our executive pastor, once was the janitor. And we would have these sweeping times of God. And they'd just go later and later and things would happen. And we used to kid because, you know, you, there's had to be a janitor in the upper room. And thinking, oh my God, this is going to go forever. What a mess. There's Peter on the table again, singing in tongues. Oh gosh, and now 3,000 people, where are we going to put them? Where's the toilet paper? What do we do? The toilets are overflowing again, you know. And you just haven't been there till you have to clean up the mess. And in fact, there was a move of God, one of many, a sweet woman came in and she was blowing on the mic, freaking everybody out, the wind of God, freaking those, some receiving, others going, that's just sound effects, whatever. Next morning, I got, the next day, I got full of the Holy Spirit, and I had this holy laughter, and it hit me right before an, uh, a marriage counseling appointment came. And I fell on the floor in the, in the uh, main office, and I couldn't get up, or I wouldn't get up. Actually, I wouldn't get up. I was having too much fun. And I felt the freedom to follow Jesus, and not for, for, for a moment, not think about what everybody else wanted me to do. And I'm going, and I'm growing, and I'm glowing, and it's just, it, and it's just, I'm getting prophecy. And finally, I started hearing, Brian is the key to revival. The janitor is the key to the revival. And now, Brian wasn't as free as Brian is today. He was, he was still going, what in the world's going on? I'm, I'm here, but I'm not here. All I know is I'm here after everybody else leaves. But I go and I find Brian somewhere in the office, uh, somewhere in the building. And I go, we go over, I say, Brian, you've got to get your chariot. We've got to run through the building with your chariot f waving flags. <laughs> you know what his chariot was? It was the janitor cart. <laughs> so I'm getting poor Brian. And he's got the janitor cart. And I'm telling him, you've got to wave a flag because you will release and allow revival to come. You know, and he's just kind of going, Okay. <laughs> You're the boss. I guess I got to still do this. But that's kind of the things that happen. You do stuff that's just like later you go, what? You know, I so offended the couple that I was going to counsel that they, you know, they, they, that, I never worked again. <laughs> that was over. And uh, later you think, gosh, what in the world did I do all of that? But then you realize, I don't know, I think it was just Jesus got, beside, got me beside myself and I surrendered and I yielded. And then, then your next thing, you're, you're trying to clean it up and fix it back. And yes, we do have children's ministry. And yes, we do have this. And, and um, so then you find yourself here in chapter 5, uh, verse 2. I sleep, but my heart is awake. It is my, the voice of my beloved. He knocks, saying, open for me, my sister, my love, my dove, my perfect. There he goes again. <sighs> my head is covered with dew, my locks with the drops of the night. And there now becomes your more proper response. You've kind of tooled, schooled yourself. I've taken off my robe. How can I put it on again? I've washed my feet. How can I defile them? That's short for saying, do you know how long it took me to clean up this last mess? And do you want me to run away with you again? <laughs> you know, next time you want to have a party, just that's first I want to see the guest list. I'm, I know where you do. You know, so it's no. No, seriously, we've been that way. In the last year and a half when the Holy Spirit started coming, I, someone said, oh, the Holy Spirit's coming. Cammy said, yes, I know, but I'm ignoring him. <laughs> because I know what he's going to do. He's going to wreck our lives. He's going to access our files. He's going to dismantle the things we have in place. He's going to bring us into a beautiful place, but in the meantime, he's going to freak us out. 
and we'll know not what to do and we'll oh okay but he has a way with him doesn't he he has a way with words he has a way with presence he has a way with beauty he has a way with activation and before long we start to say yeah I arose my beloved put his hand on the latch of the door my heart yearned for him to touch I rose to open for my beloved and my hands dripped with myrrh tangible presence my fingers with liquid myrrh on the handles of the lock I opened for my beloved but my beloved had turned and was gone my heart leaped up when he had spoke I'd, I sought him I could not find him I called him but he gave me no answer the maturing of love is that we become established in the goodness of Christ and faithfulness of God and in the assurance of his love even when he's not speaking not tangible even when he allures us into the wilderness to speak peace to us and we find it rather a valley of trouble that he then says no that's the door of your hope and you're just kind of and it's not even that it would be be one thing if when Jesus lures me into connecting with him he makes plays hide and seek with me but it isn't just that the watchmen who went about the city found me and struck me and they wounded me next thing you know the intercessors are doing you over They like get an assignment from Job's friends and show up and start to sort out your life for you. And you're going, uh, I s the keepers of the wall, the people that are guard and protecting, they took my veil from me. It's like you're just, it does, you, you finally said yes, and now you feel like you're going even further back. And it's, a tra it's traumatic, it's super traumatic. And, and, and so what comes out in verse 8 is this cry. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him I am lovesick. <sighs> Inside of us is our future. Inside of us is our destiny. Inside of us is our calling. Inside of us is what God ordained us to become, and he's liberating us from the inside out. And much of what comes to the new place is the awakening of passion, the dismantling of, of trauma, the, 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 the conflict, the confusion, until all we can do is call out and cry out. And then the daughters of Jerusalem say, what is your beloved more than another beloved? Oh, fairest among women, what is your beloved more than another beloved that you charge us so? God has a way of supporting us with many people in our beginning of pursuit of him. And then at the maturing pursuit, he takes away all the support and leaves us with nobody. In fact, the people that were supporting us are now questioning the sanity of our choice. Because the Shulamites, the, 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 uh, you know, the daughters of Jerusalem, that's the church choir for me. And in the first chapter, the first verses, they're talking about, man, wherever you go, we're following you because you guys are in hot love and we want to be a part of it. But now they're going, well, hmm, I'm not so sure anymore. I think I would have just uh, stayed in the denomination. Safe. Now here's what happens. And we're closing. The... My beloved is white and ruddy chief among 10,000. Yeah. What happens? The Shulamite who responded to Jesus' call, the sound of the voice of her beloved, the touch of the beloved, who rose to meet her beloved, who had to press through what was before all support systems. So I got to go back in two chapters and you see every one of these before, the watchmen, the keepers of the wall, and the daughters of Jesus were all a support system to get her to her beloved. Now they're all in opposition, it would appear, and are striking, taking the veil, taking away honor, moving them into disgrace. And she's pressing through, and she's just finally, her heart cries, I am lovesick. If you find him, tell him. And now, who is he? 
And finally, the thing that triggers and you will break you free every single time is when you're squished into the corner and pushed back in con, whether it's shame or blame or overwhelmness or fear. And finally, somebody will, something will say, well, well, well who is this Jesus? What's the, who is this Jesus? And all of a sudden you say, he's white and ruddy. He's chief among 10,000. His head is like the finest gold. It's, he, she goes into a glorious de- descriptive of this beloved one. We go and say things like, he is my savior, my healer, my deliverer, my redeemer. He will bring completion to every promise. He will, we, we begin to release descriptive language. My eyes are like doves. His eyes are like doves by the river waters washed with milk. And fitly said, his cheeks are like beds of spices. His hands rods of gold set with burl. Verse 15. I'm jumping through. And it says, his legs are pillars of marble. His mouth is most sweet. He's altogether lovely. This is my beloved. This is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. I want to tell you, if you want to get out of your trauma, you respond to the, the touch of Jesus, and then when you hit the opposition that will shut it, will shut you down, then get a place of declaration of who this good and glorious God is. Break past the last place you got stuck in. Press through. You are not going to get more help from the earth. <laughs> you are made to be the daughter of Jesus, or the bride of Christ. The, the, you, are, you are made to be, we are made to be of heaven. So earth is going to not help us. It, and we have to press through, and we press in praise. And next thing you know, watch what happens. Where has your beloved gone? This is the, this is the, these are the daughters of Jerusalem. They, where is your beloved gone? Oh, fairest among women. Where is your beloved turned aside that we may seek him with you? Okay, now they've got some faith. Sometimes it takes one person to get some faith and get past all of the crap around you. Rise up and say, you know, I don't care if this world is going down and in my life is falling apart. I'm going to rise up and praise the king that I love. I'm going to give him some praise. I'm going to raise my hand. I'm going to open my mouth. I'm going to shout. And that, that choice, and then employing that choice begins to shift the atmosphere. It just shifts the atmosphere. And it's time we shift the atmosphere. It's time we cause some rocks to start singing and start, things to start breaking free. Not sit around and go, oh, when somebody comes and comforts me and helps me feel my... Oh, forget it! Comfort yourself in Christ. Go let him talk to you again. He'll tell you you're beautiful. He'll tell you you're wonderful. He'll tell you he'll marry you all over again. Get a, let him get a hold of you. You get a hold of him. Praise him. Because then what happens is the people around you get free too. You don't wait for them to get free, for you to get free. You get free and they'll get free because somebody's got to get free. Somebody's got to touch the hem. Somebody's got to press through. And it's all by yourself with all the opposition against you. Somebody presses through. And when they do, they say, gosh, I want to go with you. Where is he? I want to find him. Now you're not even searching. Look at this. My beloved's gone to his garden, to the bed of spices, to feed his flock in the gardens, to gather lilies. Praise locates God. And all of a sudden, you know where he is. Just like Cammie shared that story, all of a sudden, you just go, oh, I got to get the whole thing shifted. And God locates you. And you and he are one. And then once you're there, it's like, okay, we got it. And the dialogue begins again. And the intercourse of sound and music and words and praise begin to grow until your next trauma, <laughs> to your next experience of self showing up. But self has got to show up because if self doesn't show up, self cannot be released from its control of us. And we cannot surrender to the love of God in the fear that we carry. We cannot recognize that I'm actually a control freak thinking I'm actually super free you don't see that unless Jesus shows you that and you don't see that unless you show yourself really control freaky and that isn't usually something somebody can point out for you dear Steve I'd like to point out to you you're a control freak <gasps> get behind me Satan no it's a God thing it's a, it's a deep calling into deep and it, when it happens you go oh gosh 
We're going to have to start all over again. And God goes, nah, we don't have to start all over again. Let's start right here. Let's go. Because he has no need for you and me to fix anything, just to yield everything. He's so good. He's so good. And he's got your future. It's never changing. You're not diminishing your 401k. It's just whatever. 501, you can tell I'm really planning my future. My retirement's out of this world, I'll tell you that. Anyway, he is like, we're going. We, we, just, we just, this was for you. For you to see what I already see. And I won't put you in what you see. I will now praise you back into your future. As you will praise me into your future. And I will praise. Because God is, sings over us. So let's stand together. We should close. Shevota Baba Tishika. So the awakening of love is personal, emotional, spiritual. It's responsive. We choose to yay. And often it then begins to unlock the problem we just came out of and it becomes large again and overwhelming. Who is your beloved, O oh, fairest among women, that you so charge us like this? Who is this one you seek? And there we have that moment. It's just, it's just a moment. And all of a sudden it dawns on us, yeah. I will declare who he is to me. And in the face of all the adversary, the shame, the reproach, the strikes, the bruises, the questions, the doubts, the lost plans, we say, my beloved is fairest among 10,000. My Jesus is king, Lord, kind, gentle. He's beautiful, powerful, my savior. If you're at that moment, you can go ahead and just tell the Lord who he is. Say it out loud. Just, you are. You are. Even though all the world is closing in on me, I say you're faithful. Even though my body hurts, I say you're a healer. Even though my money is lacking, I say you are my prosperity. I say you are good. I say you are generous. I say you are strong and you ride on the, the white horse and Fire comes from your mouth. Shabba Koba. I praise you. See, the sound of praise is the attraction that heaven comes immediately to and all of a sudden, all of the confusion starts to dissipate and the clarity begins to come with certainty and all of a sudden, the re-engagement of where the relationship is to be and already is in God. You are further ahead than you think you are. Sheko Ba Praise Him. Praise Him. Just for a moment. Praise Him. Praise Him. He told us He's changed the whole world in front of us. He's re-shifted the season. He told us that He's gone before us. He's removing our enemies forever. Let it be. We say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You're doing things that we could never could do ourselves. You're dismantling pride that we could never be free from unless you chose to dismantle it. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. We praise you. She put a hammer high, long cup, and get it a motor. Pustale. We praise you. 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 Utala me alone, Mohake, and there. We worship you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. It is fresh again. It comes alive again. Oh, la mahara de boho, la maha, la madile mohoto, kama hekesa. We praise you. We praise you. We have a song. We have a song. We are going to sing. We're going to be alive. We praise you. We raise the hands. We lift the voice. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. 
Keep going. I, I need help. Praise the Lord, my soul. Boast in the Lord. My soul boast, makes its boasting. Makes its boast in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My soul makes, makes its boast in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul makes, makes its boast in the Lord. Three more times, let it be your song. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, my soul makes, makes its boast. In the Lord. Two more times. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My soul makes, makes its boast. In the Lord. One last time. Let's raise the roof. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul makes, makes its boast in the Lord. Yes, praise you, Jesus. Yeah, yes, God. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, praise you, praise you. Father God, we pray now. Holy Spirit, come seal the truth that has been revealed that becomes the gospel of salvation and seal us in Jesus being the guarantee of the completion of everything that has been initiated, recovered, and released in this sound right now. And may it grow up inside of each one of us this week until we gather together on Wednesday, Sunday, Friday, Saturday, just blowing the sound of your goodness across the lines, across our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.